This is my good friend Harvey. It's uh, approximately 500 years old. It was actually pulled out of the uh, prosthetics department at uh, the Children's Hospital and it used to be used in their workshop. Now it's here. It's a five-speed, three-phase drilling machine. Uh, it's a fantastic old piece of machinery. It was actually made in Brunswick and I think it'll last much, much longer than I will. And we use that for all of our drilling processes today. Now we're ready to place our fence onto our base and we need to drill holes in our fence to do that and we need to know where those holes are going to be before we drill them. So with our arrows facing away from us we want the uh, fence block located in that front corner over the holes that were 50 mils in from the edge and then those edges should be flush. We're going to flip it upside down so that we can uh, see where those holes are underneath that we've already drilled and I'm going to mark them with a pencil. We're going to use that as a reference to drill out the holes in the fence. Now as long as these edges are, uh, are pretty much flush uh, that we, we will be fine. We're actually going to use an 8.5 mil drill bit even though a T-bolt only needs about an 8 mil and we want that extra bit of play because that allows us to make sure that when we tighten this fence up, we have a bit of play to make sure that it's perfectly straight with our front edge. So, now that we've marked that, we can go ahead and drill those right through with our 8.5 mil bit, and then we'll go about drilling two more holes uh, in the other direction for our T-track for our uh, sacrificial fence. Now that we've done those two holes, we're ready to put two more holes in this fence and they're going to go along this axis. We need to make sure that they're not going to cross our other holes, so we need to offset them by um, just a centimetre and a half to either side, to the outsides. So what I'm going to do is just mark the location of the edge of these holes, the holes that already exist, so that I can make sure that I'm a centimetre and a half away from them. I'll just use my little ruler to do that. Bring those lines up to the edge. I'm working from the outsides of the holes because that's what I need to be able to see. And now from the lines that I have, which are on the outsides of those holes, I'm gonna measure 1.5 centimeters over, 15 mil. Mark that. Now that's going to be the location of my holes that go through the fence this way and I want them placed centrally in this 30mm chunk of timber so I'm just going to use my ruler to mark the centre of that piece of timber and I'm going to use my 8.5mm drill bit to drill down into both of those all the way out through the other side and that will hold our large T-bolts for our sacrificial um, sliding fence piece. With our holes drilled in our fence, we can now attach it to the base, which is just a matter of putting your T-bolts through and then putting some knobs on. Now, you can just put this, um, don't worry about getting this lined up just yet, just tighten them off so it's not gonna fall off and we're gonna use this as a reference to mark the position of our T-slot in our sacrificial fence. So, the easiest way that I've found to do this is just to um, hold your sacrificial fence up to your stationary fence, just slide it along to the point where uh, you've drilled those holes through and just use those holes to mark the top and bottom edge of those holes and we can use those marks to um, check against the height and location of the, of the little keyhole bit so that we're cutting our T-track in the right location in our sacrificial fence. So I've got those two marks. We want to set the height of the keyhole bit so all of the lower blade is exposed. We want it to be as deep as possible in the timber. Uh, you need to make sure that some of that blade though, just a hair of it, is below the table level. So you can do that by just 
placing a piece of timber up against that bit and raising it until that bottom blade is just below that piece of timber and then lock that off. Now to set our fence distance, we're gonna use those two little marks that we made which line up with our holes. And we're just gonna be able to sight that on the two lower blades on the keyhole bitter, keyhole router bit. Bringing the fence forward until that's lined up. And then we can lock that off. Now that that's in place, we can run our T-Track through this whole piece. If you wanted to make a few of these at a time, you could and then you'd have some sitting there so that as you use these up, as you um, bite into that end and chop them off to clean them up, you'll have a spare one or two to go and grab afterwards. So when you know, you might as well, if you've got more of this sitting around, do a few of them. And now we can add these little round knobs on the ends here and that's what's going to hold our sacrificial fence in place. If you're finding the fence is really stiff to go on, you might just need to en enlarge the holes in your fence ever so slightly. Just It's possible that the, uh, the bolts are in at a slight angle. It happened on one of the prototypes I made. As long as you've... Um, Drilled the holes through with a, a drill press though and made sure that your piece was square when you were drilling, it shouldn't be a problem. So now with that uh, sacrificial fence in place, we can attach our toggle clamp. So the base of the toggle clamp can just go right up to that sacrificial fence because it's slightly higher so it'll act as a stop. We're just going to place it in between these two knobs. The location isn't critical so that looks centered to me and I'm going to use my pencil to mark the location of the four holes. I'm going to drill a pilot hole in the middle of each one of those little pencil marks I've made and then I can screw this in with the uh, screws provided. 